Hi, it's Johnny Gunadi here from Data Center Hall. And I'm in Sydney this week. And what an honor to have right now Mr. Sumit Mukija from DCI Data Centers. How are you, Sumit? How are you, Sumit? All good. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. The honor is mine. And thank you for slotting us in. I know it's such a busy schedule that you have. I must apologize in advance that I must have brought the weather from Melbourne to Sydney. <laughs> I mean, uh, for the viewers' uh, information, Sydney has been pouring rain for the past... Yeah, maybe 30 years of record has been broken in terms of this being the wettest August. Wettest August for, the, for, the, for, the, yeah. Yeah, for Sydney, yeah. yeah. So, um, so it may be for the viewers' advantage or the, for the viewers' benefit. Would you mind explaining to us uh, about DCI data centers, you know, your portfolio, where your facilities are? Uh, etc. Sure, Donny. So DCI data centers is a very fast growing, uh, very purpose built data center platform, 100% uh, owned by uh, Brookfield Asset Management. And we currently operate in three key geographies in Asia Pacific, which is Australia, New Zealand, uh, and South Korea. And South Korea, yeah. And uh, we are expanding in all these markets and also looking at expanding in a focused set of new markets uh, in the region. We won't spread thin, but uh, looking at strategic expansion beyond just these three that we currently okay. operate in, right. uh, in a very focused way. Okay. And uh, currently, our portfolio across these three geographies that we operate, including under construction and operational capacities, is a few hundreds of megawatts. Or in the order of hundreds of megawatts. A few hundreds of megawatts, yeah. but uh, it is actually, we are on track to become maybe half a gig in the next three, four years. Very impressive. Uh, that's, yeah. uh, that may sound aspirational, but that's where we're heading. Very impressive, very impressive. So with that, I think in the market today, there are players that are operating in both enterprise and wholesale, and there are those that are actually just focusing on the wholesale. Would you categorize your um, uh, data centers to be in both or in specifically for the wholesale market? So it's actually an interesting one. And for us, it is actually uh, both. And uh, our assets in... Sydney or Canberra and also in, let's say, Seoul are focused at hyperscale. Hyperscale. So okay. we can service, uh, you know, hyperscale kind of requirements at scale uh, with confidence from mm. these kind of uh, markets mm. and these cities. Whereas in our developments in places like uh, Adelaide and Auckland, yep. uh, they can service uh, some hyperscale requirements, but they can, they're they also very well positioned to service, let's say, the edge requirements I or see. the new clouds and also the government as well as enterprises. Right? Yeah, yeah. And good part is over the years, we have had experience in serving both these kinds of customers, mm -hmm. both global and local customers. Mm -hmm. And that gives us the confidence to be able to uh, service uh, both hyperscalers as well as enterprise government and even new generation, uh, new cloud or AI kind of workloads with equal ease. Mm -hmm. And that is also on the back of the operational expertise and the security and the compliance frameworks that we have been exposed to. So all of that makes us super confident to be able to address both markets. So yeah. some assets primarily meant for hyperscale, some assets meant for government enterprise as well as new cloud. So you've got like, you know, footprints in, in, in both yes. uh, segments. Yes, that's, yeah. that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's excellent. Now, um, I think there are not many of um, the players out there that they can actually operate in the region. I mean, I've spoken to quite a few Australian um, uh, operators or Australian providers, right? Um, do you have any specific learning or best practices? I mean, being a regional player uh, that you have seen um, uh, implementable, that you have seen actually beneficial for the Australian and, and even in the New Zealand market? Absolutely. Yeah. And like you mentioned, being a regional player, We've had the opportunity to work in diverse set of markets, Australia and New Zealand, of course, but also in markets like South Korea. Mm -hmm. And there are learnings, there are cross learnings that we leverage across these. Yeah. For example, in South Korea, we um, uh, ended up doing very high density projects in a small footprint and in a multi-story kind of environment. So, oh, so it's like vertically It's very up. vertical. Yeah. So that gave us the confidence to implement that because land and power is becoming scarce, scarce. Yeah, yeah. across the geography, right? Yeah. So even if you go to the new markets in, let's say, Asia Pacific or within Australia and New Zealand, where in certain micro markets, like Sydney, the land is becoming more and more sort of scarce. Mm -hmm. In those kind of markets, when we have to go vertical, yeah. we already have that experience yeah, yeah. of going vertical, keeping this, the quality and the safety concerns in mind, 
and having mitigated and gone through all of that cycles once mm. in South Korea, that gives us the confidence, mm -hmm. right? Another important aspect that we learned from some of these markets, especially South Korea, for example, is the, 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 the value that strong local JVs and partnerships bring to the table. I so see. when we enter into a new geography or even in a non-traditional kind of expansion that we may have in Australia and New Zealand, yeah. where we have a local partner or a strong you know, developer partner, uh, we can actually uh, navigate it very, very uh, easily simply because we've gone through the cycle. We made yes. a success out of that. Yeah, yeah. If you notice, we also announced um, our second project in South Korea yeah. uh, just a couple I of weeks back. I saw in the news. Yeah, yeah. And again, that is with a very strong and capable local partner, right? So um, all of that actually culminates into learnings which can be deployed not only in the current set of markets that we operate, but also in the new markets that will go into mm -hmm. as well. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I noticed, uh, I've, I've had the privilege to visit your Auckland uh, facility, I think, was it last month or the month back? And I think there you tend to build like um, horizontally, if I can Correct. say, because you've got a very fast amount of land there. Correct. Uh, but I can relate, yeah, if you're yeah. talking about uh, markets yeah. like Korea or even Japan or even yeah. all, all other Asian yeah. countries, yeah. scarcity of land. Yeah. So you need to build the area, right? Another well, example of learning I can actually share, if you allow me. So from Auckland, for example, yeah. in that market, you know, we have, we don't have and any, you know, it's, it's a common problem. Uh, the market does not have the kind of supply chain or the kind of manpower availability that you would expect, right? So you need to really work hard to get all of that going. This is from a talent perspective? Talent right. as well as spare parts, as oh, well as okay, you know, okay. supply of right, equipment right. or even, you know, availability of technical manpower mm, mm. for construction, for fit outs, right? So navigating with lesser amount of resources, right, and using them very effectively to still deliver in a timely and qualitative way is something that we learned from. There's an art to that, market. right? There's right. a specific uh, strategy and yeah yeah, 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 okay. Well, that's great to hear. Um, Maybe my last question is, um, there are probably, I don't know, can I say maybe a dozen key players here in the market in Australia and New Zealand. What would you say the challenges are for DCI data centers in this market, in, especially because we're in Sydney yeah. today, right? And, yeah. uh, and I'm sure whatever you're going to share, I'm pretty sure that everybody else also feels the same. Um, so maybe for our education, yeah. What are the challenges that you, you your, your, your business face in, in today's very bustling environment? Yeah, so let me answer that in two parts. Mm. Closer home, let's, let's take Australia, for example, mm. right? So, I mean, we all understand, we all know it's a very mature market. It continues to grow, it continues to flourish, it continues to punch far above its weight in terms of uh, data center requirements and AI deployments at scale, right, which are expected to come as well. So as a market, it is a market which is growing and very, very robust and strong. Yeah. But like any other strong market, like any other mature market, uh, it has its own fair share of uh, challenges as well. Yes. Some challenges are local, some challenges are more like macro or global as well. Right. Uh, from a local challenges perspective, we do see, you know, in patches, there are issues with power and grid connections and the time, amount of time it takes Right. It takes years, for example, yeah. to get that yeah. um, mitigated. And then there are uh, challenges in certain pockets with um, approvals and the uh, development approvals and the permits, mm. right, which mm. might also be very iterative uh, in nature. And uh, we also have, you know, uh, because of the amount of build which is happening and the amount of um, traction this market has, all happening uh, at the same time, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So there is dearth of manpower, yeah, yeah, there is yeah. dearth of resources, right? There are supply chain, you know, lead times that have increased yes, as yes. well. Uh, some part of it is also sort of um, linked to the global uh, speculative builds and the global build outs which are happening as well, right? But uh, pretty much local as well. Uh, and then globally, if you see, because of all these builds happening to support the digital ecosystem and the next wave of uptakes, right? yeah. especially around AI, uh, there are cost pressures. The, the, the input costs have increased, the cost of manpower has increased, the cost of you know all the fit outs and the long lead time equipment, that has increased as well. So local, global, it has its own set of challenges. The onus lies on us 
both as DCI and you know at a larger level as an ecosystem mm, mm. of uh, customers, partners, operators, including us and our competitors, right? As an ecosystem and governments, we need to and influencers also, right? I'm counting all of you. I mean, you are part of the ecosystem as well. Yeah, yeah. It's a collective responsibility for all of us to mitigate the situation and still come out with flying colors and uh, deliver these capacities and support the digital ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I really, I'm happy to hear that from you because I think that is the same obs observation that I see. Um, yeah, like especially about the costs going up yeah. and then in certain markets, it doesn't mean that if the cost goes up, then the price can go up as well, you know, this sort of dynamics here. Yeah. But I think I think we're in the right industry, in the very you know, dynamic industry. Absolutely. So, but in closing, uh, for our viewers, um, before I let you go, Sumit, and I thank you again for, for the opportunity. If I were to ask you to choose three words, right, to describe um, Australia, yeah. because we're in Australia right yeah. now, three words that you could um, summarize about the situation of yeah. the market today. Yeah. What would be, what would those words be? Yeah, and all of them are positive. So I would describe these three words as trusted. Trusted, yeah. Growing. Growing. And transformative. Transformative. Excellent. Now that's that's very inspiring. I thank you again, Sumit, for the time. Yeah. And I hope next time I come to Sydney again, we get to catch up with you. Absolutely. And hear from you again, the latest developments with DCI Data Center. Absolutely. Would love to. Thanks, John. Thank you very much. Yeah. And that's all the time that we've got now with uh, Sumit Mukija from DCI Data Centers. Bye for now.